Hilary Grimes' daughter, Phoebe, uh, was a student at Newcastle University when she took her own life in June 2021. Now, since then, Hilary, with other bereaved families, have joined together to form the Learn Network with the aim of preventing future deaths of students by suicide. Their first campaign is to gather support for a petition urging parliamentarians to address the shortcomings in higher education through the provision of a statutory legal duty of care for students. Towards uh, the end of the interview, Hilary talks about a video that Phoebe made six months before her death. This, as well as the petition, can be found on the Learn Network website. Uh, I first asked Hilary when she came to speak to us to tell me about her daughter, Phoebe. I'm really, really proud of Phoebe. She was an incredible daughter. She was everything that you'd want a daughter to be. She was great fun, enthusiastic, energetic, loved family, loved her dogs, loved nature, was very passionate about global warming. Um, She liked extreme sports. She loved her surfing and ice hockey. She was studying philosophy at Newcastle Uni and really enjoyed that side of the university, but hugely struggled with all the rest of it. And that's why we're speaking today, because so sadly, Phoebe took her own life on uh, June 21st. To what extent were you aware of the difficulties that Phoebe was having? I had gone to stay with Phoebe two weeks before she took her life, so May the 20th um, for the weekend, stayed in her student accommodation. Um, I completely understood what the problems were, why it was difficult for her. In April, before the May, her father had been diagnosed with terminal lung cancer and she had taken a month out to try and look after him in the month of April, so got behind in her studies she was really conscientious so that was a really big deal to her i knew how difficult everything was for her but i had no idea that she'd ever thought about taking her life it was never a discussion the most unbelievable thing is is that phoebe knew how much we loved her and i knew how much she loved us she she left a note Uh, for us before she died which said she left with love in her heart but love actually isn't enough to save somebody and I thought the fact that I could tell her a million times a day I'd do anything for her um, and my two sons and how much I loved her that that would save her and help her but the one thing that you can't do without is hope and Phoebe had lost all hope because she'd be given extensions until the end of August for her work Uh, her father was um, dying in fact he died three months after her he died August the 19th so my sons have to deal with losing their sister and their father within three months of each other so um, it's really really tough so, so let's talk about the university as well. You were up visiting, you realised that there were some issues, but not the extent of them. Was there any communication between the university and you about Phoebe? What was incredible at the inquest, or just before the inquest, we received via the coroner's office a 93-page mental health timeline and a 75-page academic timeline which had in detail all of Phoebe's communications with them. In the first term in um, September 2019, um, was it October actually, um, I was already really worried about her. I rang the university, I gave them my number, they said that they would tell the ops team and that they would contact me. Um, it's written down in their notes. It's their timelines, universities. It's not me saying this. So they had that information, but they never phoned me. So there were many occasions when you could think that they should have phoned me, um, particularly 20 hours before Phoebe took her life. The last adult she saw was the university counsellor 
And in the university's notes, it says that the counts Phoebe told the counsellor she wanted the pain to end and put her hand on her heart. And that was at 3 p.m. on a Wednesday, and she took her life at 11 on the Thursday morning. And nothing was done about that. Nothing was taken any further. Nobody was contacted. In the notes, it doesn't say, Phoebe, do you think we should contact your, your family? Um, nothing. And also, in their notes, they have, which I had no idea, that Phoebe had a suicide plan in October 2020. And she told the university that they knew that. And, and you had, did not? I had no idea. At Phoebe's inquest in March last year, the coroner uh, said the university had done nothing wrong and the university in turn told the inquest that staff didn't know that Phoebe was high risk. Um, I want to read a little bit of the statement from the University of Newcastle and get your thoughts if that's okay. Uh, they talk about being devastated by Phoebe's death and that their thoughts go out to her friends and family. Uh, they talk about her being talented and popular with great potential and remembered so fondly. They said that she studied with them for 18 months and received ongoing help and they'd been working hard to support her, that there was a support plan in place to help her with her academic studies and she had a dedicated counsellor who was helping her through a very difficult time. It goes on to say the coroner and Phoebe's inquest found they could not identify any point where things could have been done differently, either in the case of the university or her private counsellor. And nonetheless, we are never complacent and continuously work to improve the services and support we provide students. Uh, they say they are aware of the increasing number of young students uh, seeking mental health support and that they are working with key partners uh, to offer a range of options. What goes through your mind when you see that and hear that? I try and be calm about hearing that. Mm -hmm. The inquest was two hours. It was sort of at a time when there was a backlog of inquests. I felt very much it was sort of like in and out. I mean, two hours and then quite a large part of that is talking, taken up with reporting or the pathologist report. The coroner didn't ask any questions of the university that I can remember. The university just stood up and said things like, we don't believe that we could have done anything differently or they didn't know that Phoebe was high risk. And also they stood up and said that their representative said that normal counselling is for normal issues such as homesickness and relationship problems. And I just want to just shout out, does everybody know that? That their counselling is only for that? Mm -hmm. Why are they taking on somebody and still counselling somebody that they know, in their notes, has had a suicide plan if they're not up for that? And to say that they don't, they didn't know that Phoebe was high high risk is again, I'm speechless because they have the, the suicide plan. They had a call in January when Phoebe said, "Please, please help me." But Newcastle only provides six counselling section, sessions every six months, and Phoebe had to wait till May, which is what she did for her next lot of counselling sessions. So she had two didn't get what from them what, the, what she was requiring or didn't give her hope because they told her to go home and practice self-care and compassion and took her life after two counselling sessions. So six counselling sessions doesn't take into account the needs of that particular person. Um, to say that they thought that they could, they'd done everything that they thought that they could, they didn't phone me. They didn't, nowhere in the notes does it say you know, did they encourage Phoebe to, to talk to her family or her friends? You know, they didn't, they, they didn't do enough. And following the suicide plan, that was when Phoebe's father was diagnosed with lung cancer. And then following that, she was in the house in lockdown, so she couldn't do the things that she loved, the surfing and the ice hockey. Um, they knew all of this. She told, there's a record, she told about 12 different mental health related people at the university and she wasn't assigned one particular person and the coroner who had all the notes for some reason didn't question which leads me to your campaign with some of those issues that, that you outlined there Hilary you've joined with other bereaved parents and you want to get the government to legislate a statutory duty of care for students in higher education what is that exactly First of all, I just want to say that following the inquest, I just thought, I, this can't be it, this can't be right. 
um, managed to get in touch with a wonderful couple called Bob and Maggie Abrahart, who were part of a group called, are part of a group called the Learn Network, which is lived experience for action right now. So there's at least 20 of us um, that have lost children to suicide at university. And I suddenly just found out all this information that, that there is no... There's no legal duty of care. There's no statutory duty of care. There's no common law duty of care. So there's nothing that, that you can do. Universities aren't accountable. They can say and do whatever they like. It's just unbelievable. And yet their staff are covered by uh, statutory duty of care, as are people, you know, all over the country in prisons and anybody in the workplace and all those in lower education. So there's just this huge gap for students, which was created in 1970 when the uh, law changed that they became adults at, at 18 instead of 21. And I'm on Twitter quite a lot. And, you know, when I put this out there, people are replying to me going, I had no idea. This is mad. Why is this? You know, people don't realise that this doesn't, and, this law doesn't exist. And let's talk about that because they are over 18. They are considered adults. By, by law, uh, and we can talk about that, of course. And there is also the aspect about privacy, medical records, whether people, young people, want their parents to be aware of perhaps counselling that they're going through or mental health issues. Uh, what would you say when people raise those issues? If there was a legal duty of care um, with the white focused and measurable objectives relating to core processes such as um, academic tutoring teaching and student support then all these things like opt-ins and all of the questions that people ask that they're all so unclear about even the staff are unclear the tutors themselves don't know um, so there needs to be clarity so that everybody understands what to say when somebody says that they don't want their parents contacted you know there's a professional way of of asking somebody that of that question and if there was proper opt-ins that were put in by professional people students would be encouraged to opt in in the beginning and while they were in a better place obviously they don't want their parents contacted every five minutes but just in times of an emergency uh, Bristol's done actually quite well in this and I think last year they phoned 96 parents who they were concerned about their children I mean that's incredible you know if they'd phoned me uh, me or my other colleagues have lost children um, you know I believe our children um, would still be alive today so don't get me wrong they're definitely things that are happening I think that everybody realizes how important it is to have Clarity in in 2018, Student Minds, who's a a remarkable charity that was set up for the mental health of support of students, did a really th thorough research paper and identified the fact that there was such ambiguity and a lack of clarity among anyone's associated with universities with regard to to duty of care. So needs to be made clear for the students, how, the parents and the staff. How do you understand the reluctance to adopt a statutory duty of care? I think that's a really interesting question. From speaking to quite a few different people that we've been able to do as part of the LEARN network, I see that it's acknowledged there's a mental, student mental health crisis. It's acknowledged that the more than 420 deaths in the five years since the student minds brought out the report is unacceptable. 3% of students attempt to take their lives. 25% of students have suicidal ideations. It's a massive problem. That's acknowledged. And I believe that the majority of people think that there should be a duty of care. Um, I, I absolutely do. And the importance about the duty of care is to make sure that there's there's no omissions and no not doing things for students' mental health because the omissions, which seems to cause the death, omitting to information share, omitting to tell parents or omitting to tell the student in the, who's got mental health problems that they've failed their end-of-year exams, all of those things, it's to make sure there are no omissions.
the major issue is is that for some reason universities or even the government think that there is a statutory duty of care I want to turn to Universities UK, um, which is um, an association or a collective voice of universities in England, Scotland, Wales, and also Northern Ireland. Um, They are speaking out about it. They've partnership with Papyrus, which is Prevention of Young Suicide. They've published recommendations calling on universities to be more proactive in preventing student suicides and also about when universities should involve families, which of course is what you're talking about, Hilary. Uh, And it could be, of course, I should mention parents. It could be carers. It could be trusted individuals uh, when there are serious concerns about the safety or mental health of the student. But I wanted to read a, a little of a statement that they had and I'd be curious for your take on it. It says it is for government, not universities, to create the legal framework within which students learn. But if an additional legal duty is to be placed on universities, it is essential that this does not result in unintended consequences for students and improves mental health outcomes and safety for all. Uh, It's absolutely the government needs to make it a statutory duty to care, which is what our petition is about. But was so disappointed because a couple of days ago we got a government response to our petition which says that there is a duty of care and our big question is is if there is a duty of care and the government thinks that there's a duty of care show it to us where is it it has to be made legal and then what happens is it's uniform across all of the universities all over the country everyone all the universities are doing the same thing we can't have some universities that being good at opt-in some at better in information sharing it's just not right we need to trust our universities that they're keeping our children safe it has to be across the board do you think your campaign will achieve the goal it's set out to do i'm never giving up this campaign I absolutely believe it I haven't heard an argument that makes me think oh yeah right maybe Um, I don't know if you've heard Phoebe speaking in the video that she took six months before she died when she says that do you know how hard it is to get help and the people that get the least help from the government are the students and I feel that I'm Phoebe's voice I'm taking this on for you Phoebe I, I'm going to do this and it needs to happen because we need to save the lives of, of our students, protect them and be proud of our universities, that we've got really good, strong universities with proper foundations and legal frameworks to support our students in their mental health. It's so elementary. Hilary Grime there, thanks very much to her. As she did mention the video, uh, her daughter Phoebe made six months before her death uh, a moment ago. Uh, that, as well as the petition, as I mentioned earlier, can be found on the Learn Network website. And if you feel you need support or information on the topics we've covered, please do go to our website where there are links to relevant organisations. I just want to read a, a comment that came in during that interview. Uh, it is anonymous, but it says, I lost my son to suicide, a sentence I can barely be brave enough to write my son also lost hope everything must be done to save these youngsters at university government must wake up i've signed hillary's petition well thank you for being brave enough to write into us this morning uh, we very much appreciate it 84844 or at bbc woman's hour the 84844 is our text number uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us this morning